Hey YouTube, Jerry here. I'm finally doing another video and today we're at the home of Ed Nellis and he has some amazing 3D prints I'd like to share with you. His painting is phenomenal. This man has been painting since he's been very young. He's done a lot of vinyl kits, resin kits, and polystyrene kits and the work he's done on these will just blow your mind. So stay tuned, let me run my intro and then we'll be right back to talk to Ed and show you this awesome stuff he has here. Okay guys, we're back and here's Ed Nellis in his awesome little 3D printing and hobby room, maker room, whatever you want to call it. Say hi Ed. Hey. Anyway, I'd like to show you some of the work he's been doing here and then we'll get some close-ups. We have a table here set up and we'll get some of the models down for a close-up. So Ed, if you'd just like to talk a little bit about what you've been working on. Well, most, most of my work's over at my sister's house because I wanted to make room for uh, my 3D prints because my resins and vinyls are mostly over there but I got a few of my good pieces here still you want to start with the top and just go down and then we can get close up to them later this one right here yeah did this a lot 20 years ago it's a little dusty but and that's a resin or a vinyl it's a resin kit it's uh, called Necrotaurus Draconis the Death Dragon. The painting is amazing. Mostly airbrush or airbrush and handbrush? Or? That's uh, both airbrush, handbrush, glazes, wipe offs. And your demon, I forget his name. I don't remember what movie he was from. It's Tim Curry from Legend, Dark, uh, the character's name is Darkness. It's an awesome job. Excellent work. That's uh, mostly airbrush because I did this one before I learned uh, how to use uh, pastels even before I even knew about them. I love how you got that dust effect on the horns. Is that done with chalk? Or is that just living in Las Vegas, Nevada? That's living in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, these are a little, a little glossy. It's really nice. Actually, they're kind of like this. <laughs> zoom in out there. Alrighty. Moving on. Oh, this one's dusty too. That's a little pretty dusty. Catwoman or Batman? Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman. Did that about 15 years ago. And this is Batman. Michael Keaton, Batman. I'm gonna get my camera to focus in on it real good. And Michael Keaton. I didn't give Ed much notice for doing this video. That's why you don't have these already dusted off. Kind of spur of the moment popped it up on him. Yeah, last night. <laughs> and we've got the Terminator up yeah, there. I don't even mind. That's all. all mess. Right. That's a mess up. I, you know, it's. It's just a mess up attempt and it's kind of all broken up. And dead. Wolverine versus Deadpool. Well, that one we all need to see. That is an awesome model. And that came off of Facebook group uh, special STLs. Right here on the screen, guys. I'll put a link to that. So if you guys want to go check it out or buy this from special STLs and print it, you'll be able to get it for yourself. What's the scale on that, Ed? Um, I printed it at 80% and wow. that made it about, uh, say, one four scale. That's amazing. So at 100% scale, I think it would have been monstrous. Yeah. I know once in a while I print it 150%. I've done a few at 200, but to me that looks like it's like a 250 compared to what I usually see. But that is just amazing, 80% scale. You get some close-ups of it here. I hope all those details coming out on the camera. This is just unbelievable. 
How long have you been painting it since you've been real little, right? I've been, I've been uh, drawing since I was five. I've been painting since uh, I was like 20. Wow. I know I done a lot of models as a kid growing up as a fad, and then I kind of moved on with my life, and I should have stuck with it. And my painting is slowly getting better, but I'm nowhere near this kind of quality. This is perfect. This looks like a resin kit. It doesn't look like a 3D print, but it's definitely a 3D print. Printed on your CR-10 and Ender-3, right? Um, this one was all, yeah. Mostly on the CR-10 because uh, of the size. Beautiful. It's a few parts I uh, printed on the Ender-3. Okay, and moving on, uh, Iron Man, that's a resin or vinyl? Or? This is a vinyl kit. I did a few years back. Use Alclades, uh, uh, a lacquer uh, metallics on it, and the uh, red was a uh, clear uh, Tamiya red sprayed over the gold. What do you typically use a clear coat with, Ed? This one I uh, used a uh, uh, future floor uh, finish. It gives a more uh, more of a, like a metallic sheen to it. Okay. And of course it helps to protect the model because it's a real strong. Oh, finish. and and we've got lights. Oh wow, this is so cool. First one I ever, that's the first one I uh, ran lights through, LEDs. Awesome. The kit actually came with the LEDs. Let me see if I can turn the light off real quick and see that better. <coughs> da -da. Wow, that looks awesome. And Darth Vader. I believe that's also off the special STL group. Yes. I'll put a link here on the screen for that, guys. Oh, his hand's missing. <laughs> what scale did you print him at, Ed? You remember? Um, 120. Wow. Oops. And that was also printed on the combination of your mm -hmm. CR-10 and Ender-3? Yeah. And I uh, added, it comes with uh, three, different, uh, three different hands. Two different heads, and I've added magnets so you can just pop them on, pop them off. Oh, and we've got lightsaber lights. Lightsabers look very nice. I printed the the blade of the light, the the lightsaber. I printed uh, hollow with a 1.2. Uh, wall thickness. Turn the whole thing just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. And I uh, chained uh, about 23 millimeter LED lights, one on top of the other, and wired them all together and ran them through the hollow blade and ran the, uh, the wires up through the hand and the arm and through the body and down through his uh, right leg into the base. And all the lights, LED lights, are connected to these, so they all light up at the same time. Superb painting. All you guys out there that are 3D printing, and you're printing really nice, but you don't think it looks that good once you paint it. Practice makes perfect. And this, like, like I say, this looks like a resin kit, a vinyl kit. It's almost perfect. It's all in the paint, how well you can paint. Oh, and uh, like I said, it comes with... Uh, three different uh, hands. It's the force choke hand. Don't you have another head also? Uh-huh. And uh, Wow. Check him out. When you painted that, that head, Ed, can you come and tell us how you did that? Well, the head is uh, 
all the detail and has mostly done with a, actually almost all completely done with a soft pastels. Basically what I did is I primed it. I uh, and then I painted a coat of uh, pale gray blue and then dry brushed uh, pale flesh over that. Then went straight to the pastels and all the detail on the scars and the face it was done with uh, soft pastels. Unbelievable. Well, I hope I live to be old enough to get as good as you are. While the people think I do great, well, I think I, I do okay, but not great. Not like this. Unbelievable. Let's talk a little bit about your other models there, starting with maybe the top shelf, your Max you have up here. Uh, these are uh, Max from uh, Thingiverse. I, uh, see, uh, they were actually originally 10 millimeters. I scaled them up to 160 scale. And I'm a big uh, Mech Warrior fan. These two. And uh, we have one here that I've painted. Wow. And one here in the process of being painted. Both the same scale. And uh, we got uh, Sean Connery. Professor Jones, Sean Connery. Awesome. I did for my wife. That's the resin? No, this is a vinyl kit. Vinyl kit? It's, an old, it's an old Horizon vinyl kit. How much might a vinyl kit like that sell? I mean, well, this would probably be impossible. Horizon went out of business years ago. Okay. I'm the only possible way you might, you might be able to find this is on the... Uh, you're tangled, you're tangled with it. Oh. One second, guys. Got a roll of 3D Soltec here. It's got a tangle in it. Straight from the manufacturer. Yeah. Okay. You might be able to find a, a recast of it, but uh, this is like 20, 25 years old, wow. old kit. Amazing. And you might be able to find one on eBay, but uh, original, but highly doubtful. This is another mech I uh, painted years ago. It's an old armor cast battle master. I added a custom base to. First time I ever did armor. That's actually the second time I ever did armor. <laughs> you have some mechs here on the second shelf here, right? Uh, these uh, I mean, kind of don't hold together. I'd have, you know, I had to put them together and paint them because I paint them in parts and then put them together. This is old uh, Atlas. What was the layer height? Was that 3D printed? Uh, 0.1. Oh, 0.1? Okay. A friend of mine makes it 0.1. Okay. And uh, these over here, Ed. I don't think we talked about any of those. All oh, these? All oh, these. Oh, oh right yeah. here. Right here. And this is a uh, rifleman, one of the unseen from Battle Mac, the Battle uh, from Ma uh, Macros. Also on uh, Mech Warrior. Well, details are really nice. These are all approximately uh, um, 160th scale. Which is basically what, 100% scale in the 3D printing community? Well, actually, these uh, um, originally were 10 millimeter from Thingiverse. Okay. I scaled them up to between uh, 250 to 260 percent. And you have a little character there too, if you could show us that one. Uh, this is uh, actually the same scale as the Max. It's just a little mech pilot I did. Wow. Printed. What was the layer height on something like that? Uh, 0 0.06. Wow. All the detail didn't come out because you know. And on a point four nozzle, correct? Yeah. Okay. I've never printed it of anything else. Yes. 
I've been I've been printing for about two and a half years now, I believe, and I've used nothing but a point four brass. I've never had a reason to try anything else out. I kind of get stuck on a one print. One vinyl kit I did a few years back. The fly. The fly. The Brundle fly. And it actually has hair on it. I have the fly from uh, the fly too at at a at a store at the Galleria Mall for sale. If anybody's interested. What's the name of the store? Uh, Collector's Playground. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there in a while. <laughs> How many things do you currently have out there that are selling of yours? Uh, I think about five, six, I think. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And uh, here we have Nuzzle that hasn't been painted yet. Wow. I need to do me a big Godzilla. This is a Godzilla hybrid from uh, Game Body. Printed at uh, 120%. 17 inches tall. And I mean, this was a glue together, not a snap together, right? Some of their models are snapped together. It's got uh, little brackets that hold the pieces together, but I'm going to be gluing it all together when I when, once I finally get to it. But I'm so backlogged right now from painting. Yeah. That looks wonderful. I'm actually currently printing Godzilla right now. Another Godzilla from... Uh, Godzilla vs. Ghidra diorama from the new movie that's coming out. And this is a painting process, big mess, because I'm not very organized. And who did she who? This is a Rogue from the X-Men. Wow. Rogue from uh, Rogue in Savage Land. Unbelievable. It's almost done. And that's Godzilla in the process of being printed. And there's the snag again. And I got the fly in the other room. Oh, not the fly, I'm the Ant Man. Ant Man. With my, on top of the back of the big old ant. Do you want to grab that brain and show everybody? That'd be really cool. This one because it's not none of it's glued. This is huge. Looks like it has an antenna broke off. Yeah. And the wings, uh, I have to redo the connection before it come on. Wow. What's that like 200 percent? That's one. Um, what was that? I think it was 120 or 130 percent. And that's uh, game body. Because originally this was, uh, um, I think, one sixteenth scale, and I uh, bumped it up to one eighth scale. You know, size comparison for the normal size man, I mean. The quality is amazing. The fingers look perfect. Almost everything looks perfect on it. Here's the wings. They're huge. Well, I have to redo the connections so they can fit on better. Printed in uh, natural clear Solutech uh, PLA. Amazing. I was just talking about the quality. I mean, I don't see <coughs> any screwed up fingers. I don't see any cracks. Layers came out really nice. Yeah, both the Ant-Man and the uh, Wasp were printed at 0 .06, and the Ant was printed at uh, point point one. Amazing, amazing.
I'm going to wrap that up here, guys. Just a second here. And... Well, that's about it, guys. I just want to thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Jerry Knapp from 3D Printing and Painting, and this is Ed Nellis. He's all over Facebook on the 3D printing groups on 3D Print and Paint. He's on my group quite a bit, uh, 3D uh, Paint Evolved, Kevin uh, Sharp's group. Um, I'm not sure what else to say. Please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I'll try to get more content out as soon as possible. Everybody have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye.